It's doodling time. What's up all you doodles and doodlers out there, you schemers and dreamers, and welcome back to another episode of Doodle Talk. This is Doodle Talk episode 12. We are schmoving, we're schmoving along here. And if you haven't seen episode 11, look, just do yourself a favor and go watch it, okay? Stop what you're doing right now. I know this is already engaging content. You want to keep watching. You can't take, you can't take your eyes off the screen. I know, I know, but just stop. Hit that little pause button, go to my YouTube, and watch episode 11, because I had my bro, my boy, Eric on, and man, it was so much fun. Um, we had a, a nice little chat of, you know, turning your hobbies into a career, and, you know, catching up. Honestly, Eric, he, he, he yammy noob, is um, kind of like his... Uh, you know online presence does a lot of like uh, motorcycle content um he does his own you know he races and stuff and um is out on the track a lot but he does a lot of um you know just all, tons of different content for like motorcycles like beginner beginner bikes beginning like gear like what to get um other kind of like commentary fun videos funny little videos and really informative videos and stuff too um and for someone like me where like I don't really, I'm not super, I think motorcycles are really cool, but I'm just like, don't really have a lot of interest in actually owning one or riding one. But watching his videos is pretty fun. So like, even if you're not a motorcycle person, check it out. Um, they're a lot of fun to watch and Eric's really awesome. And go watch episode 11 of Doodle Talk cause he came on and um, it was kind of like, a, um, I mean, besides us just kind of catching up and chatting and stuff, it was a little bit of a, like a, interview style where I was asking him kind of for some tips and tricks because um, he has a really large YouTube um, following you know and he's really he's really successful he's doing he's killing it he's doing a really great job so he took some time and kind of answered some of my questions and gave good examples for like what to do if you're a beginner YouTuber like me or if you're like an artist who's looking to kind of take that next step and really like proactively work towards turning what you love, your passions and your hobbies into your career. So yeah, if you're inter interested in any of that, please check it out. It's really awesome. And of course, like any views and likes and uh, comments and stuff are always appreciated. So um, check that out. Um, yeah, besides that, recently I've been, um, I finally finished watching Chainsaw Man season one and um if you're not familiar with chain if you're if you like if you watch anime and stuff i'm sure you've you had to have heard of chainsaw man it's kind of it's probably i'd say the most popular anime right now um it blew up kind of like jujutsu kaisen was kind of the big anime last year and then um demon slayer kimetsu, kimetsu no yaiba was the one the big one before that so it's kind of like the new big shonen anime of the year and i watched the first two episodes um, kind of like right after it came out or like close around around when it came out and I just didn't like it I didn't really like it um, I had heard a little bit of the story previously um, kind of knew a little bit about it and I, I liked the first episode like it sets up it sets it up really well but there was some stuff I don't know there was just some stuff in the second episode where I wasn't really loving it and I dropped it um, and I didn't watch it so for the like I don't know another month or two and then so the season finished and of course like you know lots of people are, are lauding it and giving it lots of praise and they're loving it and stuff yeah of course it has it's like you know people who don't like it but I, I wanted to I wanted to give it another shot I don't like only watching one or two episodes of something and then like uh, giving it up because if I want to be able to comment on it or anything, like, I feel like it's not fair. You have to, for me, like, I know this is probably differs between people, but for me, it's like, I need, I'll give you at least three or four episodes. It, after I watch four episodes, say of like, of a season of anime, if I watch four episodes and I don't like it, I do not feel bad just dropping it and not picking it up again. Because at that point, it's like, because some people will say like, 
you have to watch the whole thing otherwise you know you can't you can't properly commentate on it like your 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 argument or your opinion is invalid then and i don't really subscribe to that because it's like if something's not getting your interest and making you want to continue watching it after f four or five episodes i mean of anime you know like we're looking at like 23 24 minutes per episode so like that's getting into hours of content that you're watching you know um about two hours ish four or five episodes and it, at that point i've invested enough of my time into something to where if i don't like it i haven't i have a valid opinion to say that i don't like it and i'll give my best criticism as to why i don't like it or something but uh, i don't really like that whole idea of like you have to literally you have to like, force yourself to sit down and watch it if you want to like hate on something so um yeah i but so for this i was like because sometimes i just need to set something aside i'll come back to it later and then i end up enjoying it and for the most part this is what happened with chainsaw man um because the other thing too is like you know sometimes when a show gets like so hyped up you're just like um it, like you get fatigue from just seeing and hearing hearing about it from everywhere and like i don't know chainsaw man definitely got hyped the fuck up so there was a little bit of that um but yeah I, I went back to it and i watched it i watched the remaining uh shit sorry i forgot how many episodes but it was like i think 10 or 11 right and um it, it's either 10 11 or 12 i don't remember but I watched the remaining, like, you know, eight or nine episodes that I had left. And by, like, episode four or five, I was, like, really invested. So I was like, okay, cool. The only thing for me is that even through the end of the first season, and, you know, it was good. Overall, I would say I changed my mind. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. They definitely hit on some good things. And I'll just give you, to keep this short, I'll just give you kind of, like, what the problem I had with it and then the thing that I really liked. So, like, the problem, you know, that I had was <clears throat> Chainsaw Man is, like, a weird mix of tropes going on where it feels like it doesn't always, like, fit the feeling of the show. Like, for example, uh, Denji. Like, you know, he's a 16-year-old boy and it's a shonen. It's a shonen jump. Uh, manga uh, anime so it's kind of like uh he has some like motives where it's like oh i want to touch boobs for the first time and that's like a driving factor and like sometimes it's kind of funny and it's like like other people have like all these righteous motives and stuff and like i just want to touch boobs or like i just want to make out with someone for the first time and it's like i get that sometimes it's funny and like it's realistic in a way because it is kind of like what a lot of like young people actually go through when they're like you know if you're a guy and you're like 12 13 14 you might that might be all you're thinking about so it's like like and it doesn't do it like too over the top where it's just like weird or like i don't know getting like harassing and stuff but for me it was weird to see that trope of like not even like just his personality of that mixed with like how serious and dark the world is at the same time and I know, I think some people would actually say that's kind of a good thing. But for me, it was like, I don't have a, a problem with one or the other being like light, like that trope. And then also like the serious trope of like a dark and serious world. But just for me, sometimes when they mix um, in certain circumstances, it, it doesn't really work for me. Um, Aki-kun, the like the right hand man, like uh, Denji senpai who like kind of picks him up too. Like at the beginning, he's... He, it's so stereotypical of that like he's a newcomer he can't do anything he's terrible he's not gonna amount to anything. why did you even pick this guy like that 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 is literally why i stopped watching after the second episode because like i couldn't take it i was like i'm so like they overdo that i don't know if it's just the anime that did it or if the manga goes into it that much as well but it was like jesus christ dude if i hear you have to like underestimate and like talk shit about this dude just because you like he's different than you blah 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 like like he's not like up to snuff and not as clean like tight knit as you and stuff it's like I, I get it i get it but that was just pushed so much to the point where i was like this is this is dumb I'm, i don't want to watch this like this uh character interaction anymore because i was like if this is how it's gonna go throughout like the first season or two until they like finally become friends which like i already know like half the stuff that's gonna happen too which is kind of like it's a shonen what do you what do you want you know what are you expecting like I have to kind of just let that slide for most things, you know. But yeah, that got resolved quicker than I was. Um, I was glad because it did get resolved pretty quickly, and I was able to put most of that stuff aside. 
the only problem I had is like a weird a weird amalgamation of like tropes and like things going on where I'm not sure if it exactly fit the world that they created for the manga or the anime. Um, and then the one thing that um, I really, really did like was um, for certain certain characters, like their portrayals and like the way they, they really nailed that kind of like hopeless, life is fleeting feeling. Um, it felt very real, like, uh, just knowing like for the um the the devil hunters and stuff it's kind of like they know every day could be their last and it doesn't feel cheesy in a way that i know some some shows do it where there it's like you can that can be a trope that's overplayed as well but in in this circumstance i feel like they did it they did they had the balance really good and that side of things where it's like a character would like stop and get real and be like you know we could die at any point so like you gotta do X, Y, Z, or like, don't take things for granted. Um, that side of things, I really, really liked. I really, really liked it. And I think that's why I had a, a little bit of a problem at the beginning with some of the other tropes, because I was like, if this doesn't mix the right way, like, I already know I'm not going to enjoy it. I think that's a better way of explaining what I was trying to say earlier, is like, if I, yeah, like, if, if it doesn't mix the right way, I know I'm not gonna like it. So like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to give it another chance, but I did. And I ended up enjoying it. So the first season was good. I do. I recommend it. I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, some of the animation is amazing. Um, like, uh, if I don't really love all the fight scenes. They use a lot of the 3D kind of CG, and they do it really well. I don't want to shit on this because it's like I have a natural like aversion to all the 3D and CG stuff that's coming out, and. Uh, I don't want to just seem like a hater so like it has its place and like you know as you watch more of it you get used to it but some of the most amazing animation is in just like the most subtle character movements that are like I mean when Makima-san has Denji's hand and she's kind of like taking it up like this and like um like the, their hands are touching or whatever and like some of these like slight like even just like sitting like this in a character head movement where like Directing in animation is so hard and this is why I think uh, Miyazaki is such an amazing director because he's not afraid to like use character movement or like he's not afraid to like do the whole like show don't tell thing whereas in like live action I feel like this is more of a implement it's like more implemented in live action where it's like you know you'll have a shot of somebody like like if they're a really good actor you know have a shot like a close-up of their face and like their eyes will just tell you everything that's going on, right? I feel like this is easier to do in live action and a lot harder to do in animation because the subtleties that it, like the doing that in animation requires a certain type of subtlety that is like almost to me, like almost impossible or like just really hard to nail. And I think some of the animators that worked on Chainsaw Man, like, I mean, and from, even from the opening, right? Like I know Chainsaw Man is inspired by a lot of like cult classics and a lot of like really famous movies and stuff. And I think, I don't know if that went into like the actual like consciously for the story and like some of the shots because I know most of the anime is using shots from the manga and stuff but like damn it was really really good and I know most people probably don't pick up on that stuff but for someone like me who uh, hopefully you too if you're interested in that like when you see some of those shots you're gonna be like man and like just thank you to the animator who probably put in like I don't know an extra like 10 hours to get some of these like movements right and like for every time they stayed at the animation studio and like slept under their desk so that they could make the cut that they were working on look really awesome like that's just big ups to them and shout out to all the animators who worked on it even the 3d cg stuff is still pretty good just not my like cup of tea um but damn were some of those like um character acting shots really really amazing and that's all i'm gonna say for chainsaw man for now um i'm sure it's getting greenlit for season two i might just read the manga this is normally what happens kind of like jujutsu kaisen i read some of the manga watched the first season and now i'm just caught up in the manga so i might try and save it but who knows but for now uh i have my problems with it but overall it's really good and <laughs> that yeah big shocker but um not much else is going on it is um late february as i record this and spring in japan is right around the corner so that is one thing i am very excited about 
Um, I think also one quick little update for um, my YouTube videos that are out is uh, besides Doodle Talk 11 with Eric, I did release the um, another animation how-to tutorial video. This one is about falling leaves. So if you want to watch that, please check it out. Um, I did release another little short one minute version as a short and a reel on my Instagram, so check that out as well. But if you want like the full tutorial, I did animating three different types of leaves, like three different ways of a leaf falling. One is just like a straightforward fall. The other I think is like the kind of razorback, kind of like going back and forth. And then the other one is a loop to loop where it does like a little loop um, and spins and turns before it hits the ground. Um, so yeah, please check those out if you're interested, like and comment, all that stuff. And let's jump into the shout out of the day. Okay, so the shout out for today is actually gonna be some of my homies, the ramen bowl. My homies, the ramen bowl from Texas. Um, I do wanna give, I wanna shout out a bunch of my homies on this podcast, people, my friends that are doing cool stuff. And I wanna, I'll sprinkle it in, you know, I don't wanna do every week just another friend of mine. I wanna do other artists and people that I don't know, people that are inspiring, stuff like that. But today, my homies, my friends, the ramen bowl, they get the shout out because they um so they they used to do a podcast that they're not currently doing right now but right now what they're doing is a lot of twitch um streams and videos that are that they're uploading to youtube for the one piece trading card game so one piece tcg um and they're hosting a lot of like events streaming the tournaments uh running shows running events running tourneys and stuff like that helping um they're really they're getting really involved with the community especially throughout like dfw um, Texas area and um, been doing a lot of really awesome stuff for I know I've kind of given them a few shout outs on um, this podcast before like while I was talking about other stuff but I wanted to have like a full dedicated shout out for them here today as well um, so yeah like for most of this stuff you can find them on Twitch they do a lot of live streams of tournaments and stuff like that if you're interested in any TCGs at all I really really recommend looking at One Piece because even if you don't know one piece that well or it's like oh i've seen some episodes of the anime blah 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 but i know there's too many characters there's too many chapters in the manga blah 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 like look man the game is really really fun and we've been playing it since um like we were playing like the proxies whenever they were just getting like released in japan before set one even came to north america so um yeah, I, I, I hook up with them a lot and we play games and stuff. It's really, really fun. So if you if you have never, if you like TCG, obviously if you don't like trading card games, like this isn't gonna be for you. But if you do, if you are interested in that stuff and you haven't really dipped your toes into One Piece yet, I highly, highly recommend it. And one of the things you can check out is my friends over at The Ramen Bowl. I have done some artwork and some animations, some backgrounds and stuff for them, so um supporting them helps support me and you know it's just really awesome stuff but yeah if you're interested in any of that um I'll, I'll try and have a link down below and also be posting some stuff up while i'm talking about it um go check out their youtube or their twitch um go to their twitch and follow them go to their youtube and subscribe because they're gonna be um putting out a lot of um you know videos and uh live streaming more tournaments and events and stuff to come so yep shout out to my friends over at the ramen bowl okay moving on to the main topic of today's episode what i wanted to talk about is don't skip the technique so making sure that throughout your you know throughout your journey through art your career as an artist you don't f don't forget that the the basics and the fundamentals are super duper important and i wanted to talk about this because i have definitely talked a lot about like you know simple styles are awesome i love i love simple styles i'm i gravitate more towards a simple style with everything like colors shapes character designs everything that's what i've just gravitated to over the years and one thing that um I find myself slipping on because of this is I'm not drawing as m many complex um, figures and characters and backgrounds and stuff like that. So I, I'll catch myself slipping on just practicing or going over the fundamentals, the basics and stuff like that. So I really wanted to make it a point here 
um, today in today's episode to kind of like talk about that and talk about some, I have five tips, five tips that I try to follow that help me practice and it helps me practice without hating it, you know, because nobody wants to like, nobody wants to just practice to get better without like, if it sucks all the life out of it, like you're going to stop eventually, you know, unless you're just super determined and Part of it is a grind and part of it you're not going to love and there's you're not going to love every second of practicing anything, you know, piano, practicing piano can suck, like learning a new piece. If you can read music, you're like, you're learning the piece and you got to go slow, the same for guitar, you got to go slow and then you got to practice every day, you got to practice over and over and then little by little, like it just becomes second nature and then you can play something that was originally really, really hard and you can play it with from muscle memory and it's not even hard to you at all anymore and you wonder like how did i even do this art and like drawing painting animating is the same thing so i have five different tips and we'll go through them one one by one and uh, hopefully by the end of me talking about this you'll have figured out um or like it, it'll be useful for you you know like you'll have found a, maybe a new tip or something that you can try and use to to help your own practicing this is not like um this isn't like a generic, like, these five tips will help you become a professional artist in six weeks. Like, this is, no, this is none of that. This is, like, things that I've realized I've, that I've started to try and do in my own routine that have helped me um, stay on top of things and keep practicing and get better as an artist. So I wanted to share them because I think I can often, I think I'll end up just, like, <laughs> I think I end up talking a lot about like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, just, you know, find your style, do do what you want to do on your own terms, um, and it'll all work out. So here are some like more concrete things that will help you get better. And that will help you get better, help you get into the rhythm of practicing without sucking all of the fun out of it. All right, so let's jump into the first one. The first one is AM practice, morning practice. And... This is something I've been on and off again pretty good about doing over the past like mm, probably year, year and a half now. Um, it started with it started with me doing these um, dailies. I was doing these daily figure drawing, gesture drawing sketches, and I was doing them at night a lot. And I was trying to do them before I went to bed, and it was good. It was really good. I was doing like a whole month on the same like uh, file, like the same project. And then at the end of the month, I'd have this like big filled out um, square rectangle of just all my drawings. And I would like post that on Instagram or something like that, or just have it to look at and be like, cool. That's like, it feels so good looking back at something like that and be like, dang, I did that every day. But for me, the doing it at night wasn't really working because I would get I, was, I would get tired or like you just really like nighttime for me is more of a creative time where I want to be working on like a project or something so I'd be like oh shit like I want to do this animation but I gotta I gotta knock out the gesture drawing so let me do that first and then it's like dang okay well now it's like 11 30 already at night and I gotta you know I gotta get ready for bed soon so maybe I got 20 30 minutes to work on this project where I would have had like I don't know more an hour hour plus maybe so what i decided to do is i switched that to the morning and i was doing gesture drawings every single morning and it was working pretty well and then i realized like okay i need to put a timer on this so i started doing 10 i think i did 10 or 15 at the start and then i was like okay this 10 minute thing is working really good but then after after about a month of doing 10 minute gesture drawings every morning it's a great warm-up um I highly recommend it for anyone who's like looking for a nice little warm up. Just uh, grab like line of action. Uh, I forgot some of the other ones like Q poses or something like some of these like figure drawing websites that just have it all there for free that you can use. Um, I think a lot of them have paid options where you get more stuff, but they have like just a generic like free um, batch of library of photos that you can look at. And they have the timer, which is really nice because I like to do just like 30 seconds um, for like a gesture drawing or something like that. Um, but back to my point is I, I was doing these things. I was doing these gesture drawings for like 10 minutes every morning. And after about a month or so, it was like 
first of all, you're going through the library, you're seeing, starting to see a lot of the things over and over again, switching between websites and stuff. So it's not as fresh and it's not as new. And I kind of like, I kind of found myself just like, uh, just blocking it in by like, through like, like through memory, almost like habit of like drawing a figure and being like, oh, I know this shape. So instead of like, uh, actively focusing on the actual figure and like properly like trying to figure out the lines and draw the gesture correctly <clears throat> I was like oh this is a hand on the hip pose I know how to do that I'm just gonna like do it just draw it like not focusing on it and I realized like uh, I was getting some diminishing returns so one thing to kind of combat that is now what I do is I have like 10 minutes in the morning before I start my work. I work at home, I'm freelance, but I did this also when I was like uh, teaching at a school and stuff. So like five minutes is fine too. 10 minutes is, is probably better, but if you only have five minutes, that, that works. And uh, there's not really an excuse for this one. This is why I, I, this is why this is like number one and the most important to me in, in a lot of ways is like, there's no excuse not to find five minutes in a day to draw. Um, unless you try really hard and you're just, <laughs> unless you find a really good excuse, it's, it's, it's almost impossible. So you can always sneak in at least five minutes and that's why I like this. Um, so what I started doing is I started just doodling, um, like just anything. It could just be squiggles. It could be a character that I was working on the night before. It could be a, a random idea that came into my head. And I was like, okay, this is fun. So it's like you either choose between like today is a study day or today is a doodle day. And that way, at the very least, like before you've really got your day going and before you've started, you've already drawn at least like 10 or 15 minutes. You got your hand warmed up. You might have come, like I've, I come up with some really good ideas in the morning when I'm just kind of like tired and like there's no pressure and I'll draw a character or like work, like do um, an iteration on a character. That's what I like to do a lot recently. And I've kind of nailed down some character designs through this. And sometimes it's like, yeah, it's like, okay, I've done like 20 days in a row of just doodling. I should probably do some gesture drawing. So it does come down to like keeping yourself in check. But I mean, like I said, like worst case scenario, you've just drawn for 10 or 15 minutes and you've got your day started on a good foot. Like that makes me feel really good because I would go through a whole day and be like, I'm gonna draw tonight. And if I didn't end up drawing that night, then I felt guilty about like not drawing. So. If you're someone like me who, who experiences that kind of guilt, if you don't draw a certain amount or don't practice a certain amount, this is a great way to like help um, mitigate that feeling of guilt because I've, no matter what, I drew 10 minutes in the morning, I drew 15 minutes in the morning. So like anything after that is just like a plus, it's just a win. Like obviously you need to keep drawing and you need to draw more than that amount of time in order to like actually make things. But at the very least, it's like, if say that night I only have an hour to draw or animate something, it's like, it's okay. Cause I got the hour in, but I also drew this morning. Plus you're already warmed up a lot of the times. So like you got that warm up in the morning. So you're not like starting from zero when you're animating or drawing later at night, which I found something I never really thought about before, but I've noticed like really, really helps just literally like, um, getting some squiggles out, just warming up your hand, stuff like that is really important. Um, so yes, AM practice. 10 15 minutes every morning even five minutes is okay to switch between gesture drawing and doodling or find your own two things that you like three things it could be whatever you want create a routine for yourself and that's really gonna help all right tip number two and this is gonna be related to tip number one is gesture drawing and doing a lot of gesture drawing as a way to um, and I use the distinction of gesture drawing and not figure drawing here because of course figure drawing is really awesome it's great you should definitely be doing that too just for me personally I find that focusing more on gesture drawing one I'm just able to do it more easily you can do it in less time and for me I learn more from gesture drawing than I do from like actual intensive figure drawing and what I mean by that is like when I'm doing gesture drawing and you know, a lot of people, there's different techniques, there's different ways to approach gesture drawing. But the way I like is kind of like blocking out the main shapes of the body or the figure, the whatever you're drawing and figuring out what makes it tick, what makes it work. You can see like, okay, when somebody's body is bent, it's kind of like these two shapes going like this, noticing where the pinch is and where the curve is. 
Um, a lot of these like kind of like simple blocking techniques that's really, really, really going to help with your anatomy and actually become super important for style. Because if you know, if you know what the like the, the, the shape is going to be, if you know, like, OK, I know that when um, like an arm, like the, the elbow part right here of your hand sometimes juts out on people or like knowing um, for your ankle, like your feet, like there's two um, little bumps normally that people have like getting these landmarks down on the body and like knowing the simple shapes and knowing how to take something complex like a, a person and and just blocking it out putting it into all these different simple shapes that you can take and rearrange and use later for me has been huge and just like consciously figuring dissecting these things taking them apart finding these simple shapes so that i can use them in my own characters or my own drawings later and like by recognizing these patterns and shapes you can just it helps you build out bodies it helps you with your anatomy it's anatomy is a lot less scary when you can break things down into simple shapes i know that's nothing new but until you practice it a lot and until you like are able to fully recognize what those shapes are in its complex form and then in its simple form will really help you because part of the reason i want to give these tips is like is right because it's like you gotta you gotta know the rules to break them kind of a thing here and just for me i focus more on gesture drawing over f actual intensive figure drawing for that reason of just like it helps me i can unlock the code a little bit faster and i can use it in more stuff like use the simple shapes in in more stuff it's really helps with like just um posing for characters, building out a body, not being afraid to use different shapes and creating like a different body shape for characters and stuff like that. So yeah, this tip number two is just a quick little one. Do lots of gesture drawing, but be conscious of what you're doing when you're doing it. Break it down and use it as a tool to study and break things into simple shapes. Okay, tip number three is gonna be always use references. So this one is huge, so huge. And this is one I don't do enough and I really need to beat it into my head and make sure I do it more. So that's one of the reasons I put it on here is so that I can do it more as well. So, I mean, because right, we can all fall into the trap of like just wanting to rework a pose over and over. I'm talking like 30 minutes. You're trying to do like foreshortening. You're trying to do something. You're trying to make the pose look cool for a character or something like that, right? Or even just placing them in, in a background or something like that. You're just sitting in a chair, sitting at a table. A lot of things where like it just seems so natural to see them in real life. But when you're drawing or animating these things, it's extremely difficult. And you think that like... You, th you think if you sit down and you rework the pose enough, like you're eventually going to get it right. But sometimes you don't or like you work on it too much to where like you can't even pick out what's wrong with it until you come back to it later or like start flipping it horizontally and stuff like that and notice like proportions are wrong and it looks way less natural than I thought it did originally. There's so many things that can go wrong, right? So instead of just being too stubborn, like of course, reworking a pose is never a bad thing if you want to, you know, try out a few variations that's awesome you probably should be doing that but the thing here is like don't don't be stubborn to the point where you're just like you're not going to use a reference and you think you can just do it with your head because most of the time you can't and if you're not able to if you're not it's this is the telltale sign is like if you're not able to naturally pose something it's because you have not used enough reference and this is something i fall um into a lot it's a problem that i have where like or you just start using this the same like three or four poses over and over and over you see this in like some older manga and stuff like that where like comics as well where like it's not necessarily a bad thing but if you get into the position where you need to draw someone in a different like stance or pose or something like that you're not going to be able to and the reason you're not going to be able to is because you didn't use enough references or you're not using a reference for that pose so not only are references going to help you like draw what you want by providing information for you to use you can then also use the references to learn things whether it's like anatomy the color choices perspective background little details the list is is literally endless here so 
the main thing here too is like i said with gesture drawing where like you need to be conscious of what you're you're studying and like breaking down those simple shapes the thing here is like you need to correctly use those references because you can look at something and draw it one to one and it's like i copied it yay the reference worked and it's like that's not exactly what i'm saying here like the thing that's going to help you is maybe like you look at something you're not drawing it one to one but you see like oh when when someone sits at a table and they put their elbows down they're actually like their body is actually this far away from the oh, okay and then the chair like oh, i was drawing them way too close to the table it's actually natural for somebody to sit a little bit further back okay okay i see i see the angle i i, I got that you're not exactly you don't have to copy everything from the reference that you're using you might just be using bits and pieces of it to like inform your own art inform your choices that you're making okay so um the other thing that this adds is like you're adding the like the you're adding images and references to your own mental library your own like uh, mental library of images and things that you can pull from later on which i think is going to be so important um it, it is so important for anyone um like talking and thinking about this always reminds me of kim kim jung gi the korean artist who uh just passed away recently um shout out to him r.i.p he uh was su so amazing he uh he's, he's he's super famous so if you've never heard of him you've probably seen some drawings of his he was really really well known for just like grabbing up a, a pen and just drawing whatever anything on anything from any perspective from anything and um like the reason he was able to do that is because he drew from life so much like studied life references and, and drew um like still life and stuff like that so much that he was just like so good obviously there's a lot of like innate talent going on here too but it was funny because i was watching a, a live stream one time they did and um one of the the people she was like helping translate the korean into english for some of the stuff and um kim jung gi was like saying like uh i they were they were giving him a, it was a challenge where he was doing like like the the um, sorry the viewer would just like uh give a recommendation and he had to draw it so it was like draw a spider on a plane flying through the air or something like that and it's like just random stuff right and he's like basically able to draw like everything it was getting down to the point where he's like uh, does that type of spider have like a like a red stripe right here or is it on this side like it was getting down to like the minute level of details where he wasn't sure on just a few things but everything else was like if you didn't know the detail was wrong like it would look like perfect right like the actual proportions and everything was was perfect and i remember he was doing that and he was saying like some of you might think this is like magic that i can just draw this right but he's like but it's not that it's, it's because I've practiced like endless amount of hours of drawing all these things. And like, then he got to the point where he knew, he knew perspective so well that he would just like, by practicing, he's just like creating this little three, he's building out this 3d world and he's using perspective. And he was one of the masters of this. And so he got to a point where like his references were wide enough that he could just it's it's amazing it's like um it kind of makes me think of like a perpetual motion machine but as in like just an artist that like got so good at one thing that he was able to like manipulate it and use it to practice another thing and it's like a a loop like a feedback loop of just like awesomeness <laughs> that um just made his art so amazing and um yeah some people look at that and they're just like wow that'd be nice wish i could draw like that and it's like you could if you practice as much as he did you know there's there's not a whole lot like standing between you and like people that um don't play music or something it's like man i wish i could play the piano i always try and tell them like you can you you definitely can you just need to practice you could do it you don't have to be that good or like i wish i can learn um xyz is like you can you literally can you most of the time it just comes down to like you need to just do the thing and practice um but getting back to actual references like that's that's why he was so amazing right um another thing is like if you have a a character with clothes like a t-shirt or something and you're like i don't know how i don't know how this like naturally drapes down the body or something like that you can look at a reference for how a piece of clothing folds at a certain angle and then you have the reference so it'll help you nail it right it'll help you get the pose or whatever right but then the thing that you need to do is like remember what you did there remember why 
remember why it hung a certain way or why it looked crumpled in a certain way. And then that will then become a piece of information that you can put into your library of references, your, your mental bank of images and, and um, things to draw off of that'll help your next drawing or your next whatever be, be better. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to use the word correct a lot here because it's like you can draw however you want, you know, it doesn't matter. When you're simplifying things, it's not always like correct, right? You may be removing details in order to simplify it so it may not be like the most realistic thing of what it actually is but it's like it's still it's still it's still something that you need to get to so you can break it down if necessary to make it into the style that you want right kind of like what i was saying before with um you need to know the rules in order to break them and a small point to make here right is like references are still a great resource um even if you have that kind of like if you even if you have like an abstract style um or like i was just saying like a simplified style like being able to recognize and correctly draw what you want and then manipulating it is always going to give you a better result than just winging it that's the that's the point i'm trying to make here it's like instead of just winging it at least have like one or two references to go off of so that you you kind of like have a better better start um for what you're working on and You'll notice it's it's also a time saver too, because if you sit there for 30 minutes trying a pose that you can't get, you could have been using a reference and it might have only taken you half the time and it's probably gonna look better anyways. And then, because sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a reference, I'll get the pose down and then I'll use the, the pose that I like from the reference and then I'll like min use that as the reference for my, my actual drawing if it's in like a different style or something. So like the possibilities, the uses are endless and it's just a really good habit to get into. One that I need to be better at as well. This is, I'm calling myself out on this. I don't use references enough, um, especially for just, just anything, for like backgrounds, for stuff. And, it, and it, it makes you not draw something sometimes. You might, you might actually be like, I should look this up. I don't know how this goes. I know, <laughs> I got the solution. I won't, I just won't draw that thing. Or like, it's gonna be another grassy field instead of having a building or like a, a structure, you know? So so don't let it be a, a crutch that you fall into. Use the reference, because um, I'm gonna try harder that with, uh, at that as well. Okay, tip number four. Don't draw the same thing over and over and over. So besides the reference, not using references as much as I should, this is probably my biggest offense, to be honest. Um, I generally know like what types of things I like to draw and animate, so I will actively avoid practicing things that I know don't fit into the those categories and that I'm probably not going to end up using. Um, I have a really good example here, so like I don't like drawing horses. I know this is this whole. I think this will, a lot of people will relate to this. It's like I don't like drawing horses. <laughs> I don't want to draw horses, and at this point, like. I'm starting to not like horses, okay? They just, you know, just because I can't draw them. They're mean, they're terrible creatures. Uh, they're just scary. They're hard to draw. Who would ever want to draw a horse, okay? No, I'm just kidding. But I really don't like drawing horses because I can't. They're extremely hard to draw. And like some other types of animals like dogs and cats and certain birds and stuff, I've practiced drawing them quite a bit. I'm not amazing at drawing animals, but um, you know, I've had to use dogs and stuff for different projects that I've, different comics that I've made and um, like I'm okay, I know the basic like anatomy and how they kind of work, especially in like a kind of like a cartoony style. Um, but you know, in my head, I know like I'm not drawing horses and therefore I don't want to practice them. Um, but here's the problem, right? That is the problem because it's like for one, I may need to draw one for something at some point um, this may not apply to horses as much because that is getting kind of sp like specific particular there but you know like if I knew I needed to draw a horse I knew I, I know that it would be rough like is I'm gonna have a hard time I'm probably gonna have to like practice a ton just to get something I'd like and two by actively avoiding and not practicing things like you're selling yourself short and kind of missing the bigger picture um, you, like you don't need to become an equestrian drawing machine by any means, right? But like by stepping out of your comfort zone a little and drawing things that you don't normally draw, 
it's gonna like build up your skills way more than you think um because like this is gonna add to that memory bank the library of references that i was talking about for you to pull from and it's also gonna like refresh the drawings that you always do because you'll have a new perspective um this 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 was kind of a an after effect that i didn't really think of but i i noticed when I would be like, I've never drawn a horse or like, I've never drawn X, Y, Z. Like, let me just try. Let me just try. This would be my morning AM uh, warm up, right? This is a great challenge for yourself too. If you want to, if you don't know what to draw, be like, I'm just going to try drawing this thing and it's going to be shit. It's going to be terrible. I know that, but I'm probably going to learn a thing or two from it. And you might notice that like, oh, from drawing that horse a few times and it's like this, this it's a terrible drawing of a horse. But you know what? I figured out like how the hair comes down the back or like how the tail swishes or like how the leg muscle looks or like how many um, like cuts the hooves, hooves have, how many like little toes or whatever do they have. And like you'll notice or like, oh, I, I drew a saddle and there was a cool like little leather part that came off the saddle. And now I can use that if I like a character has a bag or like a satchel or something like that. It's like you you by stepping out of your comfort zone you're always going to end up learning as long as you're as long as you're being conscious at all so like literally the only way this would be non-beneficial to you is if you're just like sitting down drawing a one-to-one -one shitty replication of a horse and like not trying to take anything from it and at that point you'd have to be like trying harder to do that and not get anything from it than just like consciously studying the horse as you draw it and taking little bits and pieces from it you know so just every once in a while just make sure you draw some random stuff keep it loose and where there's no pressure do not like try this if it's like here's a really important illustration or like animation that i'm working on let me choose like the thing i'm the worst at drawing and like make it a, a pivotal part of this project like that's probably not the best way to do it i would um definitely kind of <laughs> warm yourself up to it and like practice it a little bit before that but say you start practicing horses and you get it down a little bit and then you go now i want to make a project that has a horse in it that's like one of the main characters of the animation or something and i know i'm gonna have to draw it a ton but i have the fundamentals down to a certain point now where just drawing it a lot is just gonna make me get really good at drawing horses in a short amount of time that would be a really amazing way to like um like maximize the efficiency of your practice and use there and i mean if you want to talk about like a good way to get uh good at drawing something is animate it right because you're going to be drawing it over and over and over and over. And even if you're not good at drawing it, just like drawing it that many times, you'll probably improve at least a little bit. I mean, that's how it normally goes whenever, whenever I try to animate anything. But starting from a zero, taking on something that's too difficult and trying to like animate it or draw it immediately could be detrimental. So just be careful of that. But for the most part, you know, just, just draw random stuff keep it loose, have fun and learn something from it. That's the main thing. Okay, tip number five, last tip. This is mix things up. Use little games and challenges to spice things up as you practice and create art. So, you know, sitting down to draw and practice or even if it's just studying an artist or a piece that you love that is really near and dear to your heart, it's not always the most fun thing to do. For me, the best way to get myself to practice and just draw more in general is to create a little game or challenge that's going to force me to draw and have fun at the same time. Now, that's a very important thing right here. So uh, a perfect example, uh, I, I have a, a little video that's coming out that I made recently. And the premise of it is I made like a drawing Pokemon from memory challenge video where I had a, a spinner wheel that chose um, a gen 1 pokemon from at random and like it just showed their name so i couldn't see the actual pokemon and then i gave myself 60 seconds to try and draw that pokemon from memory and it was really fun and i i didn't like the 60 second thing made it so like i didn't have time to think about whether or not the drawing was good like my goal the the challenge for the video is like it needs to be recognizable um or else i'd lose like i would not get a point for that pokemon so 
that made it really fun. I wasn't thinking about whether it was good or not. I was just drawing. I looked at all the Pokemon after too. So like I had a little bit of cross reference things going on. And one minute is pretty short, but there are a ton of games and exercises like this that you can create um, on your own, use your own custom rules, take something you like and just change a part of it. Like one example could be um, just um, iterating on the Pokemon thing, right? It's like you could have five seconds to see the Pokemon <clears throat> that's been chosen. And then you have three minutes to draw it from like the memory of just looking at it for five seconds. Or another type of example could be like choosing a character you love and drawing it in three different styles and just having a reference there the whole time. It's totally fine. This doesn't have to be constricted to just like a, a time limit or like a memory challenge kind of thing. Um, I've seen that it's not as popular anymore, but those, um, <clears throat> I forgot what they're called, but there was like the six, like three, two rows of three, and it would be like a character in like six different styles and stuff. Um, that was pretty popular on Instagram and stuff for a while. So that's really cool. Um, that's a great way to um, practice and definitely step out of your comfort zone because you're probably not comfortable drawing like six styles of one character unless you've just practiced it a lot. And if that is the case, choose some other styles that you're not used to and then you'll learn a lot from it. Um, because these types of challenges, right? They're, they create really fun and interesting content. So if you want to kill two birds with one stone, record yourself doing them and then post it as a fun video afterwards. Um, just like the Pokemon video that I did. And I had a lot of fun making it. I'm having a lot of fun editing it as well. So like this is something I'm definitely going to be making more videos of. So please stay tuned for the Pokemon video coming out soon, but also other ones like that. And yeah, I just can't recommend this one enough because like, um, Creating art and practicing can be like super serious sometimes, so especially like I grew up in a, I can't, I have a like a music background, um, especially for um, school, like university and stuff like that. So uh, I've had some like rigorous times of like practicing scales on the piano is not really the funnest thing to do, but like it's always worth it, right? Um, and just ha creating a fun way to do it, like, um, I remember originally, I kind of thought like those like, uh, what is it, it's like wine and paint kind of places, those stores, like I kind of originally thought that was kind of dumb, but I'd never been, right? I still have never gone actually, but um, I know a few people, one of my friends, I think actually one of my like, uh, my cousin or someone was, was doing something like that for a while. And after a while, I kind of looked at it and I was like, actually that kind of seems like fun. Um, if you If you don't like that kind of stuff and you're a teacher there, it may not be that much fun, but like, just for fun going like having a couple glasses of wine and like painting something that you don't know what you're going to paint at the beginning or I'm not really sure how it works but stuff like that really just like um stretches out your like creative muscles and stuff like that and I think it's actually really underrated to make sure that you're doing these types of challenges to like keep yourself on your toes try new things get better at things you thought you would maybe never improve at and like or like you didn't want to practice so you never were going to improve at them uh super underrated actually i think is just like um play i forgot there's a dang man i wish i could remember this quote but it's like an author or like an artist or somebody is like the most important thing is play like artists create their best work when they're at play um and that's actually like a really, really good sentiment because when things are strict and rigid, you don't, you don't create your best work. So, like this also relates back to the whole, like, um, necessity is the mother of invention, right? It's almost like ne if necessity is the mother of invention, then play is the mother of like great works of art, right? Because you can kind of tap into that you can you can tap into the 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 other side there the muse when the muse is calling sometimes it's not always when you're when you're sitting down and practicing scales every day it's it's sometimes when you least expect it and it's when you're loose when you're in a in a state of play you're really allowing yourself to kind of like try new things and and just sometimes you hit it and it's something special and you never would have gotten there if you hadn't taken a moment to step outside of the box that you're always in and just try new things 
and let yourself be loose and open to something that might come. So yeah, definitely underrated. Mix things up and create little games and challenges to help yourself grow. Okay, so just to kind of wrap things up here, you know, when all is said and done, if you're content where you are with your art and your craft, I don't want to pressure you into doing something you don't want to. Um, you're not a loser if you don't draw for five hours a day, if you don't have the hustle that everyone else does. And um, the truth is, even if you're drawing five hours a day, you may not even be improving all that much if you're practicing with bad habits, if you're, if you're studying, you know, like I said, like you're doing things over and over again, you're not experimenting, you're not doing new things. There are a ton of factors that go into like actually improving and exploring as an artist. So boiling it down to like practice alone is in my opinion, is just incorrect. There are a lot of other factors. There are a lot of other things to consider. And the thing is here, like everyone's different, you know? And if you wanna keep improving and getting better, you're probably already pushing yourself to do so. This is kind of like the catch here is like most people who are like serious about what they do have like a genuine curiosity and want to be improving. And in order to do so, you have to do more work. You have to do more things. You have to practice. You have to like efficiently use your time. You have to be studying things. You have to be recognizing things that you're doing or that you're not doing figuring out what works what doesn't work and that all kind of combines into the single thing of like you're just if you want to get better you're going to be practicing they kind of go hand in hand here so if you're somebody who's sitting there and you think like i don't want to practice i just want to get better you're already going at it the wrong way and you probably don't actually care enough to improve and i don't want that to sound super harsh but i think it's the truth because inherently, if you don't have that thing that's pushing you to like get better or explore, you might be having you might be having a bad week. I totally get it. You might be having art block. You might just be a little, you know, not inspired this week, and I get it. But if that persists and it's been 6 months and you just don't want to draw, but you still want to like get better or you still want to become a professional XYZ, it's probably not the right thing for you and that's just something you kind of have to be honest with yourself about but if you are somebody who's just looking to improve maybe you're in the f maybe you're on the fence right like some of those things applied to you some of them didn't you are actually still pretty serious about it then here's a good chance to like really hold yourself accountable and keep practicing, right? So that's why I wanted to make this episode. I just wanted to give some recommendations for things that have worked for me over the years. And that does not mean that it, it has to apply to you. If there are other things that you like to do or things that you think that I'm doing are bad or un like un not helpful, that that's totally fine. I totally understand that. But my hope here is that you could take bits and pieces of my advice and find what works for you. Or hopefully at the very least, I've just given you like a new idea um, that you can use or twist and change and, and try to spice up your own practice and the way you practice, the way you improve in art and everything. So yeah, that's it for me this week and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.